now move to the condolence motion. It is with deep regret that I inform the Senate of the death on the 18th of June 2021 of John Raymond Martyr, a senator for the state of Western Australia from 1981 to 1983 and a member of the House of Representatives for the Division of Swan from 1975 to 1980. I call the Leader of the Government in the Senate. Thanks, Deputy President. Uh, I seek leave to move a motion relating to the death of former Senator John Martyr. Is that motion agreed to? Yes, it is. Thank you, Senator Birmingham. I thank the Senate. Uh, I move that the Senate records its sorrow at the death on 18 June 2021 of Mr John Raymond Martyr, former member for Swan and former Senator for Western Australia, places on record its gratitude for his service to the Parliament and the nation and tenders its sympathy to his family in their bereavement. Deputy President, on 18th of June this year, we learned of the passing of former Senator and former member of the House of Representatives, John Martyr. John Martyr was first elected as the member for Swan to the House of Representatives for the Liberal Party in 1975 and later serving in this place as a Senator for Western Australia from 1981 to 1983. John Martyr is remembered for being an avid and tough politician, true to his beliefs. John Martyr's journey into politics was nothing short of unorthodox. Born on May 25, 1932, in Melbourne, he was the eldest of two sons to Ernest and Ellen Martyr. When John was just three years old, his father passed away, leaving his mother to raise him and his brother in East Brunswick, where they lived until 1944, prior to making the move to Caulfield. John took an interest in politics from early in life, joining the Australian Labor Party before he and his future wife, Doris, were expelled from the then Elston Wick branch in 1955, after the split in the Labor Party in Victoria. The next year, in 1956, John would marry Doris at St Patrick's Church in Murrumbina on the 14th of April. John and Doris would soon also go on to become foundation members of the newly formed Democratic Labor Party from 1957. John cut his teeth as a campaigner during the Victorian state election in 1958, where he would direct the DLP campaign for the seat of Scoresby. He brought to the role the experience he had gained as a sales representative, the skills he had developed, being an active member of the local debating society, uh, and his experience as a member of the Federated Clerks Union. A few years later, John threw his own hat in the ring as a candidate for the DLP in the federal seat of La Trobe at the 1960 by-election. However, it was a move to Western Australia in 1962 that would change the course of John's political journey. He had been asked to relocate to Perth to reignite the National Civic Council in a full-time undertaking as its state president. By this point, the DLP had developed as a federal organisation with branches in all states and in mid-1964, John Martyr became State Secretary of the Western Australian branch of the DLP. The journey to electoral success, though, was still a long and tough fight ahead for John. For seven years, John contested every state and federal election for the DLP, until his resignation as the DLP's Western Australian State Secretary in 1971, followed by his resignation from the DLP in early 1972. John then spent some time applying himself to economic and political consultancy. Then in 1972, in June of 1972, John and his former DLP colleague Frank Ponow, Ponow emerged as vice presidents of the Victoria Park branch of the Western Australian Division of the Liberal Party. Just a few short years later, John Martyr would be pre-selected again but this time as a Liberal candidate, a Liberal candidate for the seat of Swan at the 1975 federal election. In that landslide election victory, he would defeat the Labor incumbent and was returned by the people of Swan at the 1977 election prior to his defeat at the 1980 election. Unsurprisingly, for a man of his values and a founding member of the DLP, John was remembered particularly for his vigorous promotion of pro-life policies. On election to the parliament, John notably broke convention by interjecting in the chamber before delivering his first speech to the House of Representatives, 
for which he would later reflect upon by saying, you become a shareholder in the parliament when you're elected, not after you make a speech. John held deep convictions on a number of issues, particularly what he described as, and I quote, a move away from the virtues of self-help, self-reliance and dependence on your own abilities. John felt strongly that the trend towards greater government involvement, not only in people's personal lives but also in the whole of the economic structure, was fundamentally bad. He saw resilience as residing in the role that families play in supporting individuals and one another. In his second term in parliament, John played an active role in notable debates about moral issues around divorce and the rights of the unborn child. Whilst John was defeated at the 1980 election, he would return to the parliament in fairly short order in 1981, this time in the Senate upon securing pre-selection for a vacancy created by the resignation of Senator, then Senator Alan Rocher. On delivering his maiden speech to the Senate, in characteristic fashion, John would reference his first maiden speech delivered in the House, saying, and I quote, it is not every day or even every year that a blushing neophyte like myself has a chance to be a maiden twice. John would go on to express his deep-seated belief that there was a growing issue of government over-reliance, noting with somewhat typical hyperbole, part of the reason for people believing that life is really difficult today is the constant feeding of soothing syrup in social welfare handouts from government. Everybody expects the government to pick up his personal problems and carry them, he said. In the Senate, John continued his strong advocacy for issues he had focused on in the House around family law and pro-life issues. He also took a strong interest in defence and international affairs. Whilst John's firm commitments to his principles and his somewhat firing debating style may have created the impression of a potentially disagreeable fellow, this actually wasn't the case at all. In tributes to those who had left the Senate in 1983, former Senator Don Chip, founder of the Australian Democrats, said, and I quote, John Martyr was an extreme, avid, fanatic right-winger, and he was very proud of that. The extraordinary thing was that, notwithstanding this massive difference in our philosophies, we were very close personal friends. John Martyr had a great capacity to love and to be loved. Those who, have the privilege, who, those who had the privilege of getting to know him would have found out the true meaning of affection and love. John Martyr's political life was a reminder of the importance of persistence and patience, but also the importance of people of principle and passion providing a voice in our democratic institutions that can be valued even by those who may have often or virtually always disagreed with it. John's term in the Senate ended on the 4th of February 1983 when the two houses were dissolved. Throughout his parliamentary life, throughout his long contribution to politics, throughout, of course, his long interest in policy and values, uh, and most importantly, throughout all of his personal aspects of his life, John was supported by his wife, Doris, who he leaves behind, along with their seven children and spouses, 23 grandchildren, and at this stage, 12 great-grandchildren, no doubt more to come. On behalf of the Australian Government and the Liberal Party and the Australian Senate, I extend to John's loved ones our sincerest condolences and our thanks for his service. Thank you, Minister. Senator Farrell. Uh, thank you, Deputy President. I rise on behalf of the opposition to express uh, our condolences following the passing of uh, John Raymond Martyr, a former senator and member of uh, parliament at the age of uh, 89. To begin, I express my, our sympathy to his family and friends as we join uh, with the government in this uh, condolence uh, motion. Uh, John Raymond Martyr was born in Melbourne on the 25th of May 1932. He was the elder of two sons of Ernest John Martyr and Ellen Mary Nee Goodwin. Ernest died when John was just three years old, and Ellen and the boys lived in uh, East uh, Brunswick and later Caulfield. 
John Martyr joined the Australian Labor Party at an early age and was uh, active in uh, BA Santa Maria's Catholic Social Studies Movement, which was formed in Melbourne in 1941. John and his future wife uh, Doris Helen Dent were expelled from the Eastern uh, El Elstonwick uh, branch of the ALP when the split took place uh, in Victoria in 1955. The following year, John and Doris were married at St Patrick's Church uh, at uh, Murrumbina. They became foundation members of what would soon become known as the Democratic Labor Party. Living in Ferntree Gully, John worked as a sales representative and was a member of the uh, Federated uh, Clerks Union and was active in the local debating society. He directed the DLP state uh, election campaign from Scoresby in 1958 and he ran for the DLP in a by-election for the federal seat of La Trobe in 1960. In 1964, John became the Western Australian uh, Secretary of the DLP. I suspect he took over from uh, Mark Poser, who had uh, then moved to, uh, to South Australia. Um, <clears throat> over the next seven years, he unsuccessfully contested every state and federal election for the DLP before resigning as State Secretary in 1971 and from the party in 1972. He became a consultant, working for clients including mining magnate uh, Lang uh, Hancock, and by June 1972, Marta had become the Vice President of the Victoria uh, Park branch of the uh, Western Australian Liberal Party. In 1975, he was pre-selected as the Liberal candidate for the federal seat of Swan and defeated the sitting Labor member, Adrian Bennett, at that election. Holding Swan by a narrow margin, uh, John Martyr's early focus on was uh, at work in his uh, constituency, but he also was outspoken on some contentious issues, including the secession of Western Australia. Martyr warned parliamentary colleagues not to underestimate the strength of support for the idea telling Parliament that, uh, and I quote, sometimes we get the feeling that uh, you, uh, you don't forget us. Uh, he wrapped up that speech by highlighting uh, the importance of mining in the Australian uh, economy and uh, later argued in favour of Australia's mining and exporting of uh, uranium. John Martyr achieved a surprise win at the 1977 election, beating his uh, ALP uh, opponent by... Uh, 689 votes. <clears throat> June 1979, the Australian described him as one of the toughest men on the Liberal backbench, uh, but noted that he shuns publicity and rarely speaks in Parliament or in the party room. Marta said, and I quote, the only way to hold a seat like mine is to knock on doors and tramp along footpaths. But in 1980, he lost Swan to future Labor leader now Governor of Western Australia, uh, Kim Beasley. Not long after that loss, he beat uh, 12 other candidates to win Liberal pre-selection for a casual Senate vacancy. He reportedly impressed the uh, pre-selection committee, made up of uh, Liberal State Council of more than 100 members, with a fiery speech. He later told the Senate, and I quote, I was very surprised that they chose me, for in my blunt way, I said a few things to them uh, which may not have been at the time in my best interests. His nomination was endorsed uh, by the uh, WA Parliament and he was sworn in on the uh, 24th of March 1981. And in true form, he asked a question without notice before delivering his first speech. When he did make his first speech, he referred, <coughs> and this was a quote that uh, uh, <coughs> the Senate leader referred to in his uh, comments, he referred to his earlier parliamentary first speech, saying, and I quote, it's not every day or even every year that a blushing neophyte like myself has a chance to be a maiden twice. Martyr was not elected in the 1983 election, which saw Bob Hawke lead Labor to victory and into government. One issue that John Martyr pursued in both houses was the case of Christopher uh, Durzak, a young boy with Down syndrome. Christopher was admitted to a WA hospital after developing croup and, according to Marta and others, uh, was not given adequate care because he had a disability. 
Having first raised the issue in the House of Representatives in 1979, John Martin uh, strongly uh, supported Brian Harradine when he raised the same issue in the Senate in 1981. Their advocacy resulted in a bipartisan support for a motion noting the case and calling for particular attention to be given to ensure <clears throat> the preservation of life and proper health care of disabled persons who incur some additional form of illness. Speakers paying tribute to those who had left the Senate, <coughs> to, uh, those who had left the Senate at the 1983 election recalled Martyr's capacity to discomfort them and to drive them mad. However, as the Leader said, <coughs> uh, Senator Don Shipp said, and I quote, John Martyr had a great capacity, great capacity to love and be loved. Shortly after his defeat, Martyr experienced, experienced a health care and, in his own words, slipped into the background. John Martyr died at home uh, on uh, June 18. Throughout his career, he was firmly supported by his wife, Doris. He survived by Doris, their seven children and their spouses, 23 grandchildren and uh, 12 great-grandchildren. I again express the opposition's condolences on his passing and our sympathies to his family, friends and former colleagues. I ask honourable senators to join in a moment of silence to signify assent to the motion. Thank you. The motion is carried. Uh, Senator